doing my Don Preston there, starting my video, enjoying my coffee. I enjoy coffee. I enjoy Don Preston. Uh, here you are. You are tuned into the Preterist Power Hour. Thank you for taking some time out of your evening to be here for, for a special uh, time together tonight. Uh, many of you know we often go live. If not, we always do go live Monday and Friday at 1030 a.m. Uh, that's our, you can expect to be here with us for those times unless we cancel. However, we also take the privilege to go live when we have opportunity to, uh, you know, live broadcast with guests and bring folks on that have been relevant to the power and progress of preterism. Uh, one of the goals here for the Power of Preterism Network is to be on the front lines of reformation and revival. We happen to believe that that is happening in the, the preterist community. Uh, you know, the Power of Preterism Network has continued to offer clarity, healing, and strategy in that regard and uh, endeavoring toward the progress and the power of preterism. So uh, that being said, uh, I get to be your host this evening. I serve as the, direct, the director of the Power of Preterism Network, and you can learn more about that, this effort, many of the other efforts by visiting powerofpreterism.com. Uh, again, I'm excited for tonight because we have Pete and Rachel Rue, the authors of The Return of Christ, Why Are We Still Waiting? and uh, a very simple title and has even started some uh, Facebook controversy just sharing the graphic for this program. Uh, as you would imagine, a simple title will surely do that, which is great because it also fosters good conversation. And uh, I'm sure that they'll tell us a bit about how those conversations have developed maybe during, prior, and uh, even after their publishing of the book. So I'm excited to get in on that here in a moment. Uh, I've already introduced the program. If I, before I go any further, I just ask that we direct our attention where it belongs. Uh, let's set our eyes on Jesus as author and finisher of our faith. Let's thank him for the fellowship that we have opportunity to do this on the internet, uh, to join together around his truth, to rejoice in his truth, rejoice in the fellowship that we have with one another and learn more about each other and further that fellowship. Let's pray and trust that he will guide our conversation this evening. Mighty God, we rejoice in you. We thank you that we have such a time, Lord, to uh, gather together and everything that I just mentioned. Uh, Lord, you're here, and we thank you for uh, your spirit that illuminates your truth, uh, gives us even the desire to turn to you, Lord, and of course, the desire to be diligent, to seek, search, study, and prove the things of God to the best of our ability, and of course, leaning on you for any other ability that we would need. Uh, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. You've given all things to us pertaining to life and godliness. And we ask that you continue to remind us of that, uh, that you continue to give us that spirit of rejoicing, Lord, and bless us with further fellowship as we will enjoy this evening. Lord, be glorified in our time, our conversation, and in our efforts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I'm excited to get in on uh, our, our interview tonight. I just have a couple things I want to mention. Uh, being that it's a special interview and I have opportunity to share some thoughts. Uh, one thing would be, uh, if we do a flashback on Monday, we mentioned some uh, thoughts. Back in 2015, 2016, we had a conference here at the Blue Point Bible Church. And uh, the, one of the conference, the graphic that came up on my screen earlier today was this one. Uh, this was me doing a discussion with Pastor Robert Iannicelli. Uh, I didn't quite get the joke at first after this meme was created, uh, something about the gentleman in the far right. Uh, apparently, there were some graphics where he would say that he was there for the discussion, or he was there at that event, and they did this with a lot of historical pictures or something. So somebody had thought it was funny to take the debate and put him on the far right, or maybe on your screen, it might be the left, and uh, have him there uh, saying, I was there for the discussion. It was amazing. And, uh, you know, it was a very good discussion that him and I had had. Go back to 2015, this time, March 2015. Uh, we had a conference called the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and we brought a couple of different speakers, and uh, I, I'm forgetting all the speakers that were there that year. However, I had the privilege to do this conversation with Robert Iannicelli. You can find it on YouTube. I'll share it in the uh, update that we're going to share. There's going to be an update provided as per this interview, where you'll find this YouTube link, any other resources that we mentioned during our time together tonight, and uh, of course, a, a link to purchase the book for yourself, uh, and that way we might be able to start some study groups and, you know, all kinds of different things that can come out of uh, this resource, which we're going to get in on here in a moment. Uh, then, of course, in March 2016, we had our third annual Bible conference here at Blue Point, and we had called that the End Times Conference. I'm going to provide a link that will take you to all those sessions and bless you. 
Uh, you know, I always think it's good to do some review, look back on the resources, the conferences that have been had in times past and uh, be blessed in that regard. Uh, on Monday, we talked about the current reformation and revival. And I had shared this quote that I think is timely to remind you of tonight, and especially why I wanted to do this interview this week, was uh, it was a quote from a man named Tim Brister. He served as a pastor of a church in South Florida, you know, about a decade ago. Uh, and he had said, and I posted this quote from him about a decade ago, he said that if you need to see evidence for the re uh, evidence for a needed reformation and revival in the church, just simply visit your local Christian bookstore. And uh, I did take that as my mission on Monday. So I went to the local Christian bookstore. They were closed on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So uh, unfortunately, didn't make it there today. Um, however, I did encourage some folks, if you want to go on Amazon and just look at Christian bestsellers, I thought that was a good idea. And uh, that can give you an idea of what you would see at the bookstore there on full display. And then ask yourself, does this cause us to glorify God for his truth? Are these books, and, and some of them, you know, being fair can be inspirational. There's nothing wrong with admitting that. Uh, you know, I, I can find, you know, if I'm going to be transparent. I can go to the local Christian bookstore and find a book to read. No doubt about it and find some truth there. However, I think we can all agree that if you would look around, you'd see some very strange books, some very, uh, very off, you know, books that are not biblical. Uh, a lot of times, especially you talk about eschatology, Preterist Power Hour, we're going to mention that, uh, you know, you see books that just don't relate to what the Bible is actually saying. And there a lot of times there's Christian fiction somehow just on the same shelf with, you know, Christian eschatology books. Uh, they're almost, they look like the textbooks, if you will. And uh, that should uh, cause some confusion or should cause dismay because of the confusion that it brings forth. So I thought that was important because I do believe that uh, Pete and Rachel's book here is a uh, part of, you know, you know, the current reformation, current revival. And uh, I would say that it's an, a much prayed for effort. Uh, I know folks for years, everywhere I go, uh, people have said to me, we need a book that's simpler, just something that's not a, you know, a, a, just a book about Bible theology that, you know, you give someone and they're bored by the, you know, first couple pages, if not the first couple chapters. And uh, this, you know, I'm excited and being transparent, I have not read it. I've, I've opened it up. I've spent, you know, went through it. I've smiled at the graphics, the organization, the style of it, you know, and I'm just overly excited. Uh, that's probably why I haven't read it yet. Um, you know, just overly excited to hold it, have it, look at it and think, man, this is the answer to prayer. However, I do plan, you know, in the next couple of weeks uh, to do a review and I'll, I'll write it and I'll post it on my blog and share that. So uh, this is exciting for me because I get to hear more about the book before reading it. Uh, being that it's throwback, throwback Thursday, uh, another thing I need to mention is that Pete and Rachel were on the Burroughs of Berea podcast uh, back when they had done a whole bunch of testimonies at once. Uh, what I will do in this resource is I'll provide the link so you can go back and review that. And I think that's important because there's a lot of great insights shared there. You get to know them uh, in a good conversational manner where you have others participating in that conversation, which we have our style here. But again, I think the boroughs have a very unique and, and blessed effort uh, that they bring forth. And I enjoyed the podcast twice now. So uh, I want to encourage folks to go ahead and go listen to that and be blessed. So there's your throwback resource, if you will, uh, as per this interview. So um, that being said, let me go ahead and unmute uh, Pete and Rachel, bring them on our program, and we'll move right in on learning a bit about them and uh, a great uh, opportunity to hear more about their thoughts on the book and everything else. So uh, Pete, Rachel, thank you for taking some time out of your evening to be here live with me. Hi, Mike. It's so good to see you. And thanks for having us on the show. Appreciate it. Absolutely. It's, a, it's great to be here with you. And, you know, I was thinking back, I know we were on some studies a while back together here on, on Facebook or in Zoom. Uh, you know, I can't remember how long ago it was. was. It must have been quite some time ago. Yeah, it was pretty 20 or 20, 20, 21, 21, I think. Yeah, yeah. 20? It might have been a couple of few years ago. <laughs> it was with Ward. So much right. as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Well, uh, <laughs> since then, obviously, you've published a book, which we'll get to here in a bit. But I want to go ahead and uh, catch up. Things are well with you. Uh, you, you know, uh, how's everything there in Rochester, New York? Well, it's about a balmy 45. Um, <laughs> we're bundled up in our boroughs, actually. Uh, Right. Oh, do you see it? Yes, yeah. yeah, I don't know if you can see it. But um, but yeah, um, we're hang we're hanging in there. Rachel has a little some health issues here. I don't know if you want to 
talk about that now or, <laughs> <laughs> or later, um, but I don't know where it's applicable, but um yeah. Can share. Yeah, we 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 have some challenges because um I um uh, <laughs> I don't want to get emotional. Yeah. Um well I have cystic fibrosis. That's a genetic disease you're born mm -hmm. with, but in the recent years, past five to ten years, I've had mm -hmm. other ailments develop and um things happen as you age with this disease, but then other things that have happened that may not be related. But um, I, I basically suffer with a lot of chronic pain and I'm severely disabled at this point. So Peter has to take care of me and do all of our housework. And mm -hmm. yeah, uh, he has to help me shower and <laughs> pretty much do it all. So it's really hard and it's hard for us to write a book because we don't have a lot of spare time and he has to do all the heavy lifting basically and we had challenges i, on I have the mind and the, yeah. the voice but he has to be my hands basically mm -hmm. and we had the challenges during the first book or you know and um she was a little bit more able to do some read more research at the time yeah, and, I've gotten you know, worse. and then when we came together we would write together but um this time it's just yeah. a little bit, I, I have nerve issues with my, my pelvic region of trouble sitting standing walking i have hands and feet pain i've lost almost all use of my hands so I can't type or even write. Um, we're gonna get him to be my power of attorney here in the next month, so he can handle all, all legal um, issues or anything. But um, yeah, but we're we're hanging in there. I, I mean, know, I, we're <laughs> excited we are. about everything that that's going on, and we're writing a new book. We're really excited about. Yeah. yeah, I want to get in on the new book, by the way. I know I didn't <laughs> that in the outline, so we're going to get there as well. And, and I want to thank you for mentioning that. And, you know, being that I listened to the Burroughs of Berea, I did hear you kind of mention disability and I wasn't, disability. Sure. yeah, you didn't get uh, into it too much there. So I appreciate you elaborating a bit because it, it gives us the privilege to be praying specifically for praying for you, knowing, you know, mentioning you in prayer, uh, mm -hmm. mentioning, you know, God giving you relief from pain and uh, things that, you know, we were not privy to prior. And also writing a book is hard. Well, let's do this. Uh, marriage is hard. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Especially with all this. Yeah. You know, writing a book with your, 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 you know, your, your uh, husband, your wife yeah, yeah. is hard. Uh, and then to add, you know, disability and, and to, you know, to kind of get in on that, obviously. And, and Pete, thank you for, you know, your willingness there, your, your willing heart and your helpful heart. And, uh, you know, that, that adds a lot, that adds a lot to the, the blessedness of not only this time, which I mentioned before, but even, you know, now we're seeing, this is an answer to prayer for so many people. And I'm telling you that that's the truth. And yet you, you, you are willing to struggle so much and go through things and, and strive where, you know, again, it just gives me all the more reason to praise God for, you know, the fellowship I've had with you. Uh, and, you know, I haven't known all these things. And yet here I was so excited about the book and it's just, it shows the fellowship is so much more. So thank you. Thank you for being transparent and uh, helping us know what to be praying about and also giving us a higher regard for uh, your effort and, and, you know, and, and maybe challenging those of us that are listening and, and hear, what can I be doing to contribute? You, you know, uh, that, that should inspire many to, to, to question. Yes. We appreciate all that. Thank you so much. And it's thank just something you. that we just feel so powerful about. I mean, it's our passion and this and preterism is so important and it, we just want to get it out there and that was the whole point of this and we just wanted to get out there no matter what really and um and it was just we want to do our part you know we read at this time now probably about 100 books on the topic <laughs> of eschatology and um we just wanted to share it with everybody but we just wanted to do our part because we're just so passionate about this we want to get preterism out there and get people out of dispensationalism and everything that's one of our bucket list things i guess uh <laughs> missions uh to get to end this dispensational teaching De and uh, get De through De uh, deception there's just yeah. so much deception we don't want to be deceived and we don't want others to be deceived and that that's really the yeah. heart behind all of this amen and you, you know your effort is contributing i know we have the privilege of seeing it right in front of us where yeah. we're seeing you know the minds and hearts being changed in so many ways so yes thank you for you know your effort your willingness to engage and uh, you know, I listened to the interview with, with the Burroughs of Berea, so I know a bit about you, and I, you know, I was blessed to hear, you know, how you had, guys had met, so I know theology <laughs> and there the whole time, uh, you, you know, and uh, that being said, those that are obviously listening, those that are, might be here with us, might not be as blessed, so if you don't mind, I do want to encourage everyone, go back and listen to that interview. However, 
I want to give you both a privilege to, or the opportunity at least to uh, share with us a bit, you know, about yourselves and, uh, you know, uh, who are you? Uh, how did you uh, meet? How did you get engaged in preterism? Uh, why are you on the preterist power hour? Uh, you, you know, <laughs> who, who are you? Well, I'm not blessed. So that's a lot. I'll, I'll start with me. So yeah, I mean, for those of you who don't know me again, I'm Pete Rue. I'm actually 48 years old. And um, I was a Christian probably since um, 2000. <clears throat> and again, um, as Michael said, you can see my test or hear my testimony on Barroza Berea. Um, but just kind of a short condensed version for me. Um, I was raised Catholic and um, just you know, tradition for my parents and everything. <laughs> and um, I was pretty much Catholic most of my life until um, I started teaching music. And this couple that I was teaching with were born again Christians. And um, they said, one day I'm going to get saved, you know, and I was always like saved from what? And uh, I was just trying to, um, you know, figure out kind of what they were talking about. And they, you know, helped show Christianity to me, this and that. And I was studying a lot. And, um, and uh, just basically, through reading, studying scripture and everything, it just, I came to a, a place where I just saw how holy God was and how unholy I was and how I needed to get right with God. And um, I think I was even watching a show on TBN, uh, I think it was Apocalypse Code or Apocalypse or something, <laughs> um, whatever that movie's called. And um, anyway, long story short, um, they were showing like scenes in like the, the throne room and God's, you know, um, mm -hmm you know, just so holy. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to one day have to meet him. <laughs> and I'm just in a bad spot. So I just uh, knelt down on the side of my bed and uh, just repented of all my sins and gave my life to the Lord. And um, one of the few times I think I clearly heard God's voice in my head and that, or just heard his voice clearly, audibly. Um, he said, the Holy Spirit's within you and there it shall always be after I gave my life to the Lord. And I didn't really know what that meant. And I was just so grateful that if all the things he could have said to me, that, that he said that was like the best because A, I didn't understand it fully. Cause when I went to research that and look at it, I was like, oh my gosh, like we're sealed with the Holy spirit, the Holy spirit's within us. And you know, you gotta be born again of the spirit. And I'm like, looking at all this and like, wow, that's the greatest thing. Like I could have ever <laughs> heard in my life. And now I'm his child and, and, um, and yeah, um, just been wonderful. And, you know, I got to, um, teach music still at that time um, with the owner who's also a Christian. And, um, and then I started uh, fellowshipping at uh, various churches, playing on the worship team and uh, just praising God. And, and then along the way, I met Rachel. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> oh dear. So uh, just for me, um, you know, similar background, I guess. I mean, I wasn't raised in a religious home. Um, so um boy <laughs> I'm going like this it always happens yeah so I, I was sharing with you earlier Mike um it wasn't until later in life like like I said I wasn't brought up with any specific religion um it was Peter and I both were about the age of 26 when we mm -hmm. became Christians so for me it was due to um my stepdad had a friend who was, was a co-worker that he worked with who was a Christian and he had been witnessing to my stepdad and they were holding like Bible studies in the, the break room at lunch and stuff at work. And then this guy started coming around. So when I would visit at my parents' house, this guy would be there and was witnessing. And, you know, obviously these were things I had heard throughout my life, but I hadn't yet fully committed, you know, um, and I just remember the guy saying like constantly talking about the Bible and Jesus and, saying one day, you know, do you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and was resurrected three days later? And I was like, yeah, I believe that. And he was like, well, then you're saved. And I was like, what? You know, it, was, it didn't fully click at that moment, but um, I was really excited about it because, you know, obviously I had lived a life of a sinner <laughs> my whole life and had had some rough patches in life. And so at the time I was really excited about this and was like, this is it. This is what I've been waiting for my whole life. And I remember when I get, got saved and was like, take me now, God, I'm ready to die now, you know? But that's like, obviously, no, that's not how it works. God still has work for you after you get saved. So I know that now. Get yeah, rapture you right away. No, Never but yeah, what I was telling you earlier, <laughs> because I don't know if people realize our timeline and we didn't fully elaborate 
on this in our book or in our interview with the boroughs. But yeah. so Peter is seven years older than me. So even though we both were about the same age when we got saved, so that that was about the year 2000 for him and 2007 for me. So he had already been a Christian, you know, by the time I came into his life, he had already been a Christian for 10 or 11 years. And I was much newer to learning all this end time stuff. So that's where we can. So I had to set her straight. We had some friction. <laughs> it was hard <laughs> for him to change his view when he'd already been studying like dispensationalism. Tim Lahane can't this, be wrong. Uh, yeah. No way. Chuck Missler. Yeah. Chuck Missler's right. right. Um, so it was. I'm sorry. Jonathan it, Conlon. It's interesting. He's just 100% right all yeah. the time. You, you, can't be. So many names, so many. <laughs> These are those books that are in the bookstore that I was talking about before. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. These names, yeah. yeah. Amir Sarfati's big right now with it. Uh, John Hagee. Oh my gosh, if he writes another book. Um, <laughs> and uh, there's just so many. There's too many to list. Actually, um, I know Mark Hitchcock is big now too. And um, I think Amir is like the biggest current guy right now. I, I somehow writes like three books a year or something. So, so that's the funny thing so when, when our, our very first date he was super impressed with the fact that I actually knew who Chuck Missler was mm. <laughs> he's like most girls don't know that he's like they oh don't know George Spider. they don't know yeah. Chuck Missler Everyone. but the reason why because my stepdad and his friend they were all big into that and that's how I knew about it and I think it was like 2008 and they went to some prophecy conference and they actually mm. both got to meet Chuck Missler and Amir Sarfati. Hmm. So, so yeah, I was I had known who I was Chuck like, oh my God, if she knows Chuck Missler, this would be amazing. And I was like, I was like attracted to her more because she's she God. Christian. No doubt about it. Christian, like we, we knew, and like, theology yeah. on your first date. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So actually, that being said, I, I did want to there's two things I wanted to mention. First thing is that we brought up being from Rochester. So all this time you're in New York, correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. I, 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 I lived in Rochester. Rochester. Sorry? That adds some context to that story right there. I mean, I'll tell you what, you know, I've lived in Florida. I've lived in different places. I've traveled around the nation to meet a girl, uh, you, you know, that knows Chuck Missler in, in New York. <laughs> <laughs> I just was on a podcast on Monday night where they were talking about, so wait, New York is not completely godless? And I was like, <laughs> God is here. He's at work, you know, so uh, I do... You know, I think that adds context to both of your testimonies as well. Uh, it's encouraging to know that God is at work in well, in places that people, you know, we're like the forgotten uh, people, you know, people forget that New York <laughs> does have the Holy Spirit, folks. Um, and yeah. the other thing, uh, something that you mentioned on the boroughs that I, I think applies to what you were sharing there, uh, you had mentioned something about the person that led, maybe it was you, Pete, that led you to Christ is the person that introduced you and Rachel. Yes, yes. indeed. So yeah. the owner of the music school, um, his wife, because they're both born again Christians, uh, the owner of the music school's wife introduced us um, at, at, for, at a church. Yeah. So yeah, and then, we we came over. I was I was invited to their house for a Super Bowl party. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> and they're not like you know connecting us or anything, but um, but I'll give a little background to that yeah. as well. It's interesting because what it was is so, so we did not go to the same church. I was at a Calvary Chapel. He was at an Assembly, He's Assembly of God. Of God. Okay. So, but I went to church with the sister of the woman who introduced us. And what happened is they found out I had cystic fibrosis. Well, um, his, the, the woman who introduced us, her daughter has cystic fibrosis. Yes. So we had that connection. So she introduced me to her sister and mm -hmm. then found out I was single. Oh, we got to introduce you to our friend Pete. That's the first thing she says to me. As at so least then, first on the list. I mean, somebody can do something. She the Super Bowl and she, you know, <laughs> calls me the one day and, you know, you, you come in tonight? Yeah, I'm going to come. Oh, okay, our friend Pete's coming. But it's not a setup. It's not a setup. No, not she at says. all. I'm like, oh, yeah. God, okay. <laughs> so, the whole thing anyway, was a major setup. And yeah, it was yeah. That, yeah. So we met. I think I saw some of the game. I don't know. It was, I don't even remember. But yeah, yeah. it was a total setup. It was cool. We connected right away, though. We like, we talked a lot that first night. But we had a good conversation. Yeah. But they, they kind of made it awkward because it oh, was God. a setup. It was like, so awkward. <laughs> it was, yeah. 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 And then I had, a, I didn't have a cell phone at the end. This is funny. And I, I got tried to get her number, but I don't have a cell phone. She has a cell phone. And I'm like, well, I had to just get the number. I think through. He walks me out to my <laughs> car. He's like, oh, let me get your number. He doesn't have a, a phone number or a pen or a cell phone or a pen or anything. And I'm like, 
I don't know. Get get the number yeah. from our friend and then call me. And he did. I was a musician, so I was broke. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway. No, but I got a no, cell phone okay. just so I could talk to her. So there's a... Sometimes uh, the, the awkwardness helps make it more provoking to, you know, we all right, well, now that we're in this situation, we at least have to make sure we stay in touch and, and communicate uh, yeah. now that we're put in this, you know, so that's that's beautiful. And that's it's encouraging uh, to hear that, you know, and I can only imagine the beginning conversations, you know, uh, you know, you, here you have you, you've been studying Christianity for a while. I, I expect, Rachel, you're saying you're somewhat of a newer Christian uh, at that time. And, uh, you know, so mm -hmm. I can only imagine the, the, you know, the dates and the conversations uh, to find, again, the, the little bit that I know about both of you, obviously you're, you're thinking people, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're putting this together and, and struggling and learning, uh, using a lot of these resources. So uh, it's encouraging to imagine what those discussions have looked like. And even obviously, as you've put together this book and uh, you know, what your conversations even continue, you know, you've engaged studies online. So I can only imagine you get off the programs and probably have far more conversation on off the program than you did on the program. So. We, we do. We talk about yeah. it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Early in our dating, we just thought about the rapture pretty much the whole time. And then it moved into the millennium and then it moved into <laughs> different aspects of revelation and, you know, yeah. time statements. And everything yeah. Else. And so, I yeah. just, if I can have a second to <laughs> clarify, because we talked about Walter Martin in the boroughs and I felt bad because I, I didn't mean it for it to seem like I was picking on Peter, but he was like, but she hey. does. he goes, we found out, he's like, we found out Walter Martin didn't believe in the rapture. And I was like, no, 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 I found that out. And the reason I said that, I didn't give the backstory, but he loves Walter Martin. And he got me into it when we were dating. We used to watch uh, Father, the Pacwa. Father Pacwa debates on the John Ankerberg show and <laughs> the Protestant versus Catholicism stuff. And, um, you know, he was the original Bible answer man before uh, hey, Hannah Hannah Graf. Graf so when I was researching yeah. all this rapture stuff, I discovered that Walter didn't believe in the pre-trip. And that was like, oh, that's my ace. I could not wait to share that with Peter because I knew that would have an impact on him because he really respected Walter and it did. And so, then Walter Martin used to work with Chuck, Chuck Missler, Missler. <laughs> and Chuck used to pick on Walter and say, sad day, sad day, Christ can't come back today oh, okay. um, because they had the, the tribulation had to happen first. first. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so. it, gets, it gets strange eschatology doesn't it when you do the study and you really look into it it's like whoa you, you know it looks like the charts that you're seeing at some of these yeah. sensational uh oh gosh, yeah. yeah yeah there's a lot so anyway sorry we're so, taking well, up a lot of time. This, i'll tell you the beauty of uh, having a relationship that is you know a lot of round around theology is you never have any end of things to talk about you know that's my wife and i can rejoice in with you in that is that there's always something you know we, we can pull topics out of a hat and just go uh, mm -hmm. you know, in so many different directions. So that's beautiful. And I, I think that, you know, it should be praised. So thank you for sharing a little bit of that with us. Uh, in yeah, these, in thank these you. Days. And I think we grow quicker because we just constantly bounce ideas off each other and you just grow really quick. So I'm sure you're probably experiencing that. I mean, you're already grown <laughs> beyond your years, but um, already from studying with you, but I just, I think you grow quicker and you get another perspective and you know, insight. And you, get, and you challenge each other. Provokes more thought. So yeah. yeah, it just, I think we grow quicker from that. I'll tell you what, I've never been so wrong before as I have been in the last, you know, <laughs> it's, it's been great. Um, you know, uh, it's, and that's true. You know, I don't say that just in jest either. I say that, you know, in, in many conversations, you know, I'll, I'll try to fight it out, you know, even words. Uh, Edward's actually been privy to some of these uh, things, you know, at Bible study, we had to bring the church in on it. Luckily, we got a whole church to help, you know, figure this out for us. We're arguing about the meaning of a word and going back and forth for like the whole day. And then finally, we were like, all right, we're going to bring the church in on it, you know, and she's like, he's saying it this way, I'm saying it this way. And, you know, I was wrong. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, awesome. you know, we talked about the Burroughs uh, podcast. So I think we kind of got out most of uh, you, you mentioned some of the things that we talked about back room that you wanted to bring up post discussion, but I want to go ahead I and give you a privilege, you know, uh, the moment here. Uh, was there anything else that you wanted to bring up? Uh, how'd you like the podcast? Did you uh, appreciate Rick and, and the, the boroughs that were there with you? Uh, was there anything that maybe you wanted to mention post podcast? Um, they well, are sweethearts. Yeah, we they, absolutely they're love that. Yeah. yeah, it was really nice. They're so yeah. welcoming. Rick Welch made it so easy, and um, everyone there, the whole cast there, they're, and they're everybody really was just fun. amazing yeah. people, <laughs> and we had a blast, and uh, they just made it great. and. Um, we we're just grateful that we had a, another platform to share our story and um, to kind of get the word out um, for our passion on preterism. So 
Yeah. Amen. Amen. And if I may, uh, you know, I know we spent a lot of time uh, talking about a lot of uh, relationship stuff, but folks, I think <laughs> that's important. You know, I'm going to say that uh, I think it's important for all of us to be leaning in on that and learning a bit about each other in a relational way, a fellowship way as well. Um, but what I want to ask you about before we go any further uh, would be, uh, so how did each of you, if you don't mind, hear about preterism? It's preterist power hour. I felt that's probably an important part of all of this. Uh, what was your initial, what was the, or not, not even had you hear about it, but what was the, what made it click? What was your, oh yeah, that's, that sealed the deal, yeah. that finished it up. Uh, who wants to, whoever, Pete, you want well, to? Well, basically just to start this, like, you know, uh, in our journey, this whole thing, we, she kind of like uh, pushed the whole thing, the whole uh, eschatology thing. I wanted to just write a, 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 a commentary in the book of Matthew. And, you know, she's pushing um, all these eschatology views. And she's like, what are you going to do when you get to Matthew 24? Or what are you going to do when you get? And I'm like, I'll worry about it later. I'm on chapter one. But she kept <laughs> pushing and pushing. So, you know, we went through like the rapture views, I think like the millennial views. Well, but, I, but she was the one kind of spearheading and, and um, mm -hmm. pushing everything forward. And I would say that you heard about preterism before I did. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't know if you want to share that. It's just that we talked about this on the Burroughs a little bit, but I was always you know, before I had all the trouble with my hands and everything, I used to be really more active in the Facebook groups because you mm. learn a lot from other people. And, um, you know, obviously we read books and, and read the Bible, of course, but um, you get so many different perspectives in the Facebook groups. And once I got into, um, I think I shared shortly after like becoming post-trib on the rapture, I started questioning the millennium. It didn't, the chronology mm -hmm. didn't make sense to me started looking up on millennials and I joined the amillennialist Facebook group. I learned so much there. Um, and then that's, it, it's, it's kind of a blur because I've heard about preterism in different times or places or stumbled on videos on YouTube or whatever, but it, it was talked about a lot in the amillennialist group because there's a lot of people there who are partial preterists. Yeah. And that really was blowing my mind because people I kept hearing about 80, 70. I didn't know what that was. But let me jump in real quick. So sure, dispensationalism, as you know, like has all these different views and everything is scattered everywhere. And amillennialism did something huge for us, which just brought everything together really nice. But we still were like wrong on the timing, but we had it together. And I think that was a huge It's a help. stepping stone. A huge and it's stepping like, stone. And then so it's like we put it all together. There's one return of Christ. There's one rapture, yes. resurrection, of, and final end event. But then all of a sudden, you get hit with time statements. Yes. And We're then you're like, what do I do with all this? I can't <laughs> keep dividing this up the way the dispensationalists do. And that's where I just really struggle. I wrestled with this for a while because, again, a lot of people are partial preterists. I was like, well, aren't you doing what the dispensationalists do? Sometimes the coming of the Lord was AD 70. Sometimes the coming of the Lord is, is a, still a future coming. It's the yeah. same thing with the rapture and the second coming. And I, I really struggled. And I tried. I was like, I can't. At the end of the day, I was like, well, if preterism is right, then it's full preterism. Yeah. I, I wrestled with that a lot for a while. I kind of shelved it. I didn't know what to do with Matthew 24. I saw people... We're doing all kinds of things with it. Dividing I started looking it into verse, it. They're dividing it at verse 34, 35. 35 Some are dividing verse, it yeah. at verse 28 and 29 or 29 and 30 and trying to separate that second coming from the great tribulation. And I'm like, but it says it's immediately after. And I just, I, it bothered me for a while, but I wasn't ready to concede. So I was like, I don't know what I am. And eventually I, I was like, I have to be logical. The only thing that makes sense is the full preterist. He he sat on it longer than I did. Yeah, and for actually, a while, I'd be like, Are you? yeah, he's like, well, I don't have a view. I'm viewless right now, he'd say, because he was still trying to work it all out. But but I was so willing to learn and I just wanted the truth. So basically, I was actually it's a funny story because I was ready to buy the book, um, um, Ed's book there. Um, what happened, happened in 80, 70. 70? And I was ready to get yeah. it's in my Amazon card. And she's like, hold on, don't buy it. I'm friends with his wife on Facebook. And so he reached out to Beth and then. They were like, yeah, we, we I guess well, they invited us. she sent me the PDF of the book. I was yeah. like, I, I already have the book on PDF. Beth Stevens um, sent it to me. But we got invited over to their house. And so we just, I just got in the car and drove two hours. And yeah, let's figure this out. Like, so we went there. We did like a six hour Bible study. And um, he really helped me through 2 Peter 3, because that was a huge struggle for me. That was like really tough. And he, he walked me yeah. through the whole book. And I was like, okay, that, that, 
at least there's a really good explanation for it. I mm -hmm. still well, I wasn't hundred percent sold, but um, I had to like study and learn it for myself more. And then, yeah. no, I was gonna say, I also had stumbled upon the video on YouTube. Uh, You've got to be kidding, kidding, right? By Brian Martin there. Yeah. And that was a, it was funny because it was the time when I was struggling with what to do with Matthew 24 and he mentioned John Bray. Mm -hmm. So I was like, that's, that's it. I need that book. <laughs> so in, in two, the year 2018, a couple mm -hmm. things happened in the year 2018. I found out because I was also in the Steve Gregg group. I found out Steve Gregg and Don Preston had done a debate. Mm -hmm. I was like, I must see this. So I bought that from Don. Mm -hmm. Then I watched the, the video and I found out about the John Bray, Matthew 24 fulfilled. I bought that book. So I watched the debate. I read the book. I, I was convinced by, by the end of 2018, I was full preterist. It took yeah. him a while yeah. longer to commit to that, but she was a yeah. huge Steve Gregg fan at the time. And Steve mm -hmm. didn't fare so well on that video with Don <laughs> 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 remotely in the neighborhood. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, so seeing that and just seeing how much stronger the points were for full preterism as opposed to partial. And then for me too, I, I struggled. Um, so I, I got that book, When Shall These Things Be? Um, was it Keith Matheson's book? Yeah. And then um, when I got House Divided with uh, Mike Sullivan, I was like, wow, he did such a much better job and I'm getting better answers and um, this makes more sense. Sure. And again, talking with her, it just makes more sense. It's, it's full or nothing. Like you cannot divide this stuff. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense and no. it makes all the other passages not make any sense. <laughs> And you're just arbitrarily dividing and who's to say what passage means what, and it just doesn't make sense. So the time statements really got us um, like mm -hmm. Matthew 16, 27, 28 is huge, you know? Um, yeah. All of a sudden, all these passages that I've questioned for years, now they made sense. Preterism had the answer. Yes. I was like, cause I, I that's another thing years ago, mm -hmm. I might've been email at the time. I actually came to Pete. I'm reading Matthew 16 one day mm -hmm. and that, verse stumped me and I actually came to my husband and I'm like I don't what does this mean what did you do he was like <laughs> I'm not really sure look it up so I like researched it on the internet and everything is saying it's the transfiguration I was like hmm okay I didn't like I didn't love it but I didn't know what else to do with it because I didn't know about 8070 yeah so and no church teaches 8070 so you're just kind of stuck yeah but once we look at the time statements, really looked at everything, we were with full progress at that point. You have to concede. I mean, the evidence is overwhelming. You're, it's just a natural path. <laughs> yeah, amen. It, it, you know, it, it's interesting because it sounds like you kind of rubbed up against preterism and then kind of grappled with it like that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, some folks, it, it, I love hearing people's stories about how they come to preterism just because, mm -hmm. you know, you hear some folks that will obsess about the time statements. Some folks, you know, kind of go, uh, you, you know, they were just reading and, you know, well, when did Jesus come? You know, that's a good question. Uh, kind of like the C.S. Lewis approach, but obviously C.S. Lewis went in a different direction. Um, then you have, uh, you know, there's just so many different ways. And, and I just appreciate that you shared that. And uh, it's, it's interesting. And it, I'm glad it causes me to praise God all the more for resources, because it sounds as though those were very instrumental in your mm -hmm. coming to grapple with these things. So that just, you know, we need yeah. more resources. It gave me confidence too, just real quick, okay. um, because <laughs> me trying to grapple with it and trying to prove it wrong and me not being able to prove it wrong and all these arguments were actually for preterism, like someone's trying to like, a future's trying to make an argument, it's just making a better argument for preterism. I'm like, it just constantly goes that way. And I'm like, I felt really confident, like I've been digging and digging and I finally hit rock bottom where this is the, this is the truth. I've hit yeah. truth. <laughs> and we yeah. always try to, and I love this about Pete, because he'll, he'll search everything out. We always try to look at everything from both sides. That's why we love watching debates. Um, I was just going to also say briefly, there was a time when I was in the email group, I actually had an interaction with Don Preston because he briefly joined the group. They don't allow full preterist discussion, but they let him join the group um, because he was recruiting for a debate and I actually got into a couple of conversations with him and kind of arguing I mean in a friendly way but like about two Peter three and then we Don and I got into a conversation at one point about Revelation 22 and I was giving him my take and he was giving me his take and he was his comments were so long of course and I was showing Pete and we're, we're scrolling I'm like I don't know what this guy's talking about I don't understand this and uh at one point I just had to concede I said I don't know, Don, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm going to have to study this more. And he was like, well, thank you for being so kind and gracious and polite. And I was like, I remember being like, wow, this poor guy must get attacked on the internet all the time. I was like, I just, 
yeah. I tried to be polite, but I just, I didn't understand his take on it. And it was the first I had ever heard it. So that that's yeah. interesting too. There's yeah. been a lot of different <laughs> things. Man, all that, that Don, Pres- Don Preston <laughs> going online, geez. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, and again, it's, it's interesting to hear how we, you know, how we find out about these things and how we take advantage of the resources. And, you know, we should feel encouraged to do debating on Facebook and so forth. I think there's a right way to do that. Obviously, I think we're all privy to the wrong way to do that. Um, you yeah. know, we see it. Uh, all, um, bullying should be marked out and as problematic, no matter what manner it's being shown, whether it's, you know, we, we obviously have a problem with bullying in our society uh, mm-hmm. and then we're calling it out online as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, having discussion as it sounds as though you were having uh, is important. And, and you know, uh, I mentioned earlier a, a throwback, you know, video to a, a conversation I had back in 2015. And if you ever watched that, uh, you know, Robert Ianicelli, he, he continues to just exude grace, this man. He's a local pastor here, and I think he's all millennial. And, uh, you know, I kind of, uh, you know, mocked his perspective of, you know, it goes like this somehow. It's like kind of going together. I didn't quite understand that. I still don't, uh, for that matter. But the conversation, we were able to disagree. And I can Mm -hmm. still say that what I just said to you and not feel as though I'm, you you know, speaking against him. He knows that I appreciate who he is and his diligence, his humility, Uh, just disagree with his eschatological position. You you know, we should feel uh, willing. You know, I love what uh, Brother Zach, uh, he's not here with us tonight, but he often says this in our program that um, we need to find a place for people that uh, don't want to call themselves a full preterist, a partial preterist or any of these titles. They just want to say, I want to search, you know, I want to seek this out and find conviction as God gives it to me. And there, you know, we really do need a place for that. Um, We ended our program, matter of fact, on Monday uh, saying that uh, we hope to be, uh, we hope that what's happening in Christianity is this beginning of giving grace in those areas of, you know, you don't have to have the the three questions answered, you know, you can kind of just relax in life. (laughs) So, so yeah. uh, you know, just I hope that we see more of that. So I want to appreciate what you were saying, Rachel, about uh, that conversation with Don. And we shouldn't feel afraid to disagree. There just needs to be times where, uh, you know, we do it in the right spirit. And, and hopefully people are doing that with us. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. you know, I did want to get to the book. I think that's uh, important. Um, you know, yeah, we've, uh, we've been rambling <laughs> well no this has been good this has been uh, okay <laughs> I've, i appreciate it uh, what i did want to do is just ask some questions about your book and obviously all of this leads in on the book it's important to know everything mm-hmm. that you just shared so um the return of christ why are we still waiting and uh you know just to give some quick reviews before i ask some questions um rick welch had said and rick welch was a guest here on our program so he had said that that was a humble fresh approach if you remember during your podcast there to uh uh you know that that's what he took of this book a humble fresh approach to looking at preterism and eschatology uh cherry lewis said this book is awesome so that i thought that was neat and as you meant as i I thought that's why it was cool to bring that graphic i put up earlier where they said the conversation was awesome so here you go you got two awesome resources on the preterist power hour today um and I'm, I'm intrigued. You said that uh, the idea for the book, Pete, you mentioned the idea for the book came at Cheesecake Factory. I like Cheesecake yeah. Factory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, uh, and then there was a lot of things that you mentioned in the writing of the book. I know, Rachel, you had brought up that you've already written books, uh, you, you know, mm-hmm. say things to, I think you mentioned it before about giving things to friends, uh, having something, a short write up or summary or something. So, uh, yeah. So if you don't mind, let's start with why did you write the book? you're going into all this preterist stuff with who would you really want to enter the fray of preterist books you know <laughs> yeah well yeah well it it really was just to to have something because this is what this is what we do when we stumble upon something I, I like to hone in on like the key arguments and points and lay it out in a systematic way and make it really simple clear scriptural just no fluff like Pete would mm-hmm. say get to the point and here it is yeah. Um, because we, since we've become predators, we've shared it with several, like some of our close friends from church and things mm-hmm. like that, but it's hard because there's a lot, there's a lot in the Bible and, and it's a lot when you only have an hour or two to chat with somebody and we thought, you know, mm-hmm. we need to put this in a book and make it, make it easy easier. and clear. And that way, if somebody wants to, here you go, this is what we believe in, why this may help you understand where we're coming from. 
Yeah. And I just wanted a tool to share with people. Like, you know, when we have people over for dinner, usually we have a two hour Bible study after <laughs> it turns out that way. And we shared terrorism a few times with some people that came over. And there were some, most of the time people would say, wow, this makes sense, but we don't have anything to hand them. We don't have a tool to give them or something to, you know, an to, easy read layman's terms. Yeah. Want just something simple. Church goer to be able to understand it. And so we also like did the format in a way where, you know, one time we, we shared this with somebody and we shared the problem at the end. They're like, wow, you should have told us that in the beginning. Right. So we're like, ah, like, so, we're right. Lewis. <laughs> so we're like, okay, we're starting with the problem. So we'll start with the problem. <laughs> so and, then, did. and then I usually start with like last days because everyone wants to talk about how we're living in the last days. It's yeah. just so open. So then we went into the last days and then you get into, you know, um, day of the Lord and John the Baptist and that, and just kind of like paint that picture. And then I wanted to add pictures. I wanted to have the scriptures a lot of times because nobody looks up a lot of scriptures when they're reading a book. They just glance over them. They might know some of what they mean, but most people don't. So I was like, just give them the scripture right there, show the references, um, show timelines. Um, I'm a visual learner. Charts, so picture, pictures, pictures, charts, you know, yeah. just makes it so much easier. And it also saves on the writing. Um, the other thing is I know a lot of people don't like to read a lot. So we made it purposely under hundred pages. And we also wrote to the page because uh, it just may, it forces you uh, to constantly condense and make it more concise and to the point. And I can't stand books that have lots of fluff. I'm reading a book now, 30 pages in, and now we're finally getting to the topic. Finally. I mean, it's just unnecessary. But I know, you know, um, a lot of these book publishers want that if you, you know, going to sell a book for 20 bucks, it has to be 300 pages. That's also why we self-published. <laughs> so we could just break all the rules, get something out there. Um, no introduction, just here's the problem. And this is how it's fixed. Christ came back already. And um, <laughs> this is really important. But we just did that format just to make everything super easy. And I also did the cover. I wanted it to be, um, I wanted it to capture um, dispensationalism. <laughs> I wanted it uh, I wanted it to be a cheesy dispensational cover because if you're in the store and you see, oh, Christ is coming back again, you know, why are we still waiting? I want a dispensationalist to um, to look at this book and, and pick it up because, you know, th and that was the point. And a friend of ours was in a preterist uh, site or whatever and got kicked out um, after he um, recommended our book because they automatically looked at the cover and thought it was dispensational. Thought you were a futurist because of the yeah. but, but So it did everything I wanted it to do. I think captures people. Pete actually came up with the why are we still waiting? But we've had we've had dispensational friends say that like, gosh. What's taking so long? Why hasn't it come back yet? So, hey, yeah, well, that's a good question. Why are we still waiting 2,000 years later? You know? Yeah. We yeah. thought it would grab so, people. Yeah. I think the title, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, a testimony <laughs> to that. I had it sitting on the kitchen table as I was <laughs> the program today. My younger brother walked by the table and he said, the return of Christ, why are we still waiting? And just kind of walked into his room. So obviously the the, the the title caught his attention. The book mm. at least caught his attention there. So, um, you know, the testimony to exactly what you just said, you know, that, that it, it grabs your attention. Uh, and if you get to know, I talk about my brother every once in a while around here. He's not a, a, a theology nerd like me by any means. Uh, you know, I'm lucky that he engages me in conversation about these things. So uh, for that to grab his attention, it was a, you know, it provoked that thought. And he knows, he knows preterism, you know, better than probably some uh, folks online that teach it because of obviously me rambling about it all the time so um you know he he was intrigued by the title and i say that that's good and it's simple cool. you know and obviously yeah. i went through the table of contents and i'm currently working on a book myself i understand the uh i understand the desire like that that need that you have with your friends and you know you know the language that your friends kind of use and you know what the, what they're what they're intrigued by so i've begun doing something similar and mm -hmm. i'm excited to see that in your table of contents we you know, because again, exactly what you said, there's so much that goes into it. Like, uh, well, what do you say the kingdom of God is? You know, let's start there. And then it's like, you know, well, our time statements, this and that. It's like, just let me get it down. And, you know, I want to appreciate what you did here because I'm intrigued because this might uh, help me in a lot of conversations where I have friends that, you know, just need it very, keep it simple with me. So my question for you, I guess, would be uh, how has it been received since you've published it? Uh, thank God it's been well received. Uh, we were thinking we were going to get some negative feedback, but um, so mm -hmm. far we have like 19 positive reviews on Amazon. Um, the book um, 
Oh boy, we're in 35 states because we're filling out their own orders. So we're in 35 states, two countries. We sold over like 350 books. Uh, we started selling in September. Um, so it's been well received, great feedback. Um, it's it's been it's really well. Obviously, wonderful. not everyone's going to agree with it. We, I'll say this: <laughs> most of the people who are purchasing our book are already preterists. But what's interesting mm -hmm. is they've reordered or they bought it. ordered in bulk. So we're like, okay, I guess they like it, or they're trying to share it with their friends and family. But we've even had several friends in our hometown area who have read the book and are now have moved from futurism to preterism mm -hmm. because of it and wanting to get together with us for Bible studies. I mean, we've, we've had a great response. It's been yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. And also with the book too, um, we, I tell people too, I mean, cause I know a lot of people don't have time to read, but if you just read pages one through 13, I think we make a solid checkmate case that Christ had to come back in the first century. So if you don't want to read the whole book, <laughs> if, you, if you want to read the whole book, I just tell them, look, just sit down and read just without stopping page one to 13, just without stopping, read those first 13 pages. And then you tell me if you can refute it. <laughs> I think, cause I think we, we pretty much checkmate you at that point. You got Thessalonians in there. He had to give relief. I and mean, we end with that. <laughs> the, page 13, the overall so. evidence for preterism is it's, so overwhelming. And when you look at it as a whole, you can see we have had conversations with futurists who've disagreed with us. They really don't have any scriptural arguments. Their biggest argument is, well, th there's no way that happened in 8070. That's literal. And that didn't happen. I call it the you Michael know? Brown ar argument, where that just didn't happen yet. That just didn't happen yet. Yeah. It's just like, you know, you can say anything you want. You can ask that. Well, that just didn't happen yet. The, it's just the like Mike Brown and Mike Sullivan debate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Things are getting more and more desperate. Uh, you, you know, with, uh, you know, most folks have moved away from dispensationalism into more of a partial preterist idea, if you will, yeah. millennial, post-millennial, whatever it might be. And as I think we're noticing on, you know, many different way of, you know, ministries and focuses, uh, they, that they're getting more and more desperate. They're stretching arguments. You know, I think the latest, my brother, for example, he'll even say, he'll say, what's the argument against preterism this week? You know, because... You know, <laughs> change they evolve you know whereas like this week i think that i told them uh, just the other day i said the argument is uh that if the church misunderstood it you, you know for all this time then what are we really saying about the church uh, yeah you know and which, we're point. not saying that we're saying the church has always understood jesus uh, there's never been a message that the church has not preached that it's it must be jesus uh there are details regarding jesus that we've seen reformation and uh, you know, necessary revival, if you will, around in the church over the past 2000 years, there's no doubt about it. So, uh, you know, uh, it, it just becomes a strange thing. And my young, my younger brother, again, not being a theology nerd, he's watched the movie Luther with me. If it, nobody's ever watched that, I encourage folks to watch it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, because in that movie, you get to see, you know, the, the same sort of hierarchical problems, if you will, that are happening in common day Christianity, you know, the same sort of it's not the Catholic church any longer. We unfortunately see, you know, the contemporary church kind of built a new version uh, mm -hmm. of the Catholic church in many regards, the vanguard, if you will. Uh, you, you know, so uh, yeah, it's just intriguing. And, and my, my point in mentioning that was, so my younger brother, when he hears these conversations, his mind can go back to that movie Luther and he can say, oh, that it, it's kind of sounds like you got that. They're acting like that, mm -hmm. you know, not wanting to even hear what's going on and i always think it's a good Paris. Thing. yeah um well i'm glad to hear about the uh the book having a uh, high you know uh, good regard and you know that you're, you're getting being well received uh what i want to ask you uh and i'm not going to do the spitfire question so I'll give you a heads up i'm not going to do it i'm going to bring folks on here and talk with you in a bit but what i do want to ask you um so now moving forward uh there's two things i have to ask you here uh, moving forward, I know you're working on a second book, so I want to give you a moment to share a, a bit, whatever you're willing to share with us about that. However, keeping our mind on this book first, uh, what's the, uh, are there any future events or any ideas that you're doing in the future with this book and or how can we, us listening, myself, being a pastor of a church, help you with this book? What can we do uh, as far as, uh, is can we buy in bulk? Can we uh, what yep. what should we be doing? Uh, is that that's beneficial to buy in bulk? Yes, yes. So we we sell it on Amazon, and you can just if you put in either our name or the title of the book, you'll find it on Amazon. Um, we sell it locally in our town, but um, that 
doesn't really affect anybody. <laughs> and then we you, people just um, through Facebook, they can just contact us. Now, buying in bulk is the most beneficial for everybody, because if you do buy in bulk, we try to give discount rates as well. But also it just saves us because um, the book is very expensive to print. And we sell on Amazon, they take a chunk and we're paying shipping and it just keeps getting smaller. And we're not, we're really breaking even uh, on we're that. Losing our yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we're just passionate. We want to get it out. So the yeah, only way we can actually. Um, well, we've had people like they'll reach out to us on Facebook messenger and say, Hey, can you can I get a deal if I want yeah. 10 books or 15 books? And we've done that with people. So yeah, contact us directly. And then usually what we'll just do is like have someone send us a check. We mm -hmm. did also um, set up a PayPal account because a couple of people asked for a different method because um, for international, like we had a, a customer in Canada as well as a customer in Australia that paid us through PayPal and that was convenient for everyone. Um, so yeah, just contact us directly instead of going through, through Amazon. Unfortunately, we don't have a website right now. We, we may at some point in the future, but we don't. So yeah. And we might All have to right. think about making it digital too. Yeah. So go ahead. Sorry. I think that would that would be good, but I, I think keeping, you know, having hard copy is a good idea. How can people yeah. get in touch with you if they're not on Facebook? Hmm. That's do a good you, question. Do you, do you <laughs> want to provide your email or um, yeah, we can I can give my email out. Um uh, to everybody. Well, I could give mine and then I could Facebook okay. message you. We could do it either way, whatever you feel yeah, most it's, it's up to you. <laughs> yeah, um, I can give out mine right now. Um, okay. so my email address for everybody would be p d u b y a h at gmail.com. And that and that is now spell p w <laughs> at gmail.com. They wanted to put my initials in there, but I, they wouldn't take it. So I spelled out my W, so it's W. All right, good deal. What I'll do is uh, for those that you know are saying what, uh, I'll go ahead and write <laughs> that in our update. That way, people can see it right there in the print. Uh, and then, of course, you know, I would encourage everyone if you're watching this, you probably have some inkling of who I am. Reach out to me, get in touch with me, and I'll make sure I direct your message over to Pete and Rachel uh, for that. So, um, my, goal, my goal again, yes, Amen. Thank you. You know, thank you for contributing. Uh, you know, this time and for a resource. Now, I'm curious. I want to give you the moment here. Uh, tell us, what, what are you working on next? All right. So the new book uh, was kind of my idea because, again, we this has been a journey for us. And we started here as futurists because, you know, you are you get born again and then, boom, you're in the pool of futurism because that's what everyone believes. And now we're all the way over here and we're preterists. And there's this gaping chasm of nobody knows what we're talking about, language barriers, issues. So I was like, wouldn't it be great to have a book that just kind of describes all the views, like all the rapture views, all the millennial views, um, all the approaches to Revelation, and you know, just share and show all the views, but also include full preterism because full preterism never gets kind of a seat at the table. Never gets any credence. Mo most, <laughs> most commentaries just say, we're going to talk about partial preterism and they bash that and just say, well, full preterism is just heretical. So we're, we're just going to ignore that. We're going to just go on partial that, preterism, which is an easy target to bash on. So you're like, okay, well, you're not representing us properly at all. And, you know, so we wanted to give a fair share. So we're kind of bridging the gap that great chasm between futurism, because for us, it was a long journey. But I also think that two things. One, we just take someone by the hand through all these different views because the church is, to be honest, has been indoctrinated on one view. And if you bring up any other view, it's heretical or they go crazy, this and that. And two, it gets the preterist view into people's hands that normally wouldn't buy a preterist book. Now they have the view in their hands, but they're also getting an education. And that was the big thing. We want to educate the church. That was the the huge thing, just to say, hey, look, there's other views out there. This is what other people believe, sincere Christians, you know, Bible-believing Christians, and, you know, they've come to different conclusions, and here are all the views presented to you, and, um, you know, yep. hopefully we'll get you out of dispensationalism and, and anything else. That's <laughs> but, more uh, biblical. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so we're working uh, yeah. diligently on that. We're more than half done with the book already, and um, it's, like I said, but, it's... Yeah, um, same it's style as our first book. So again, easy to understand, easy to read. You don't have to read 500 different books to understand this stuff. We're condensing it all down mm -hmm. and just trying to give the general understanding. And and again, it, if I could say this, but like, you know, you read, there's dispensationalism and like he always says, there's this huge gap between futurism and preterism today where people don't really, a lot of Christians we talk to, they have no idea, like, what's on millennialism? What's post, what's this? What's that? 
So this is going to explain all that. And when you see that all the other views, how they interpret, mm -hmm. what, what's the temple in the new covenant? What's this? What's that? Well, there's a lot of symbolism going on. Mm -hmm. When you hear the other views interpreting it that way, preterism doesn't sound so crazy anymore. It's only futurists yeah. that take everything so wooden literally. Right. And just real quick, we, we we share and we try to get someone from dispensationalism all the way over to full preterism. It's, if it's you want it like leap. right away, like, yeah, no, it takes, it's a huge leap. It took us baby it took steps. years to get there. So, and lots of studying and lots of books. And so we're trying to like. There has to be a easier. tool to bridge yeah. that gap. So that's why we're yeah. writing the book. And I think it'll help people. And also. We, we talked about a few things about preterism that we didn't get a chance to talk about in the first book. I think we're going to address the millennium more and stuff like that. Some more things and really help give a more an education of the whole topic. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, amen. It sounds like that's going <laughs> to be just as much of a answer to prayer and, and a needed book as this one has been, because uh, I'll say this, uh, at our church, at Blue Point Bible Church, the pastor that years ago introduced preterism to the congregation what he had done to do that was he took them through the whole gamut of all the views. He taught yeah. them dispensationalism. He taught yeah. them perspectives to say, Perfect. well, the, where, do we, where do we end up? You know, what do we believe? So you're doing that exact thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I find that so necessary in my, you know, that in my conversations, even just today, it wasn't about the end times. It was more so, you know, flipping the Bible over now, going back to the beginning. Obviously, mm -hmm. we know there's just as many isms. Uh, when it comes to, you know, Genesis, as there are regarding uh, Revelation. So here I am uh, talking to my younger brother about, you know, a, a couple of different views about creationisms. And, you know, again, all the isms there, covenant creation, yeah. <laughs> you know, young earth creationism, all these different things. And what I realize is it is important. And that's, again, my, my point here is I know how important it is to kind of give an exhaustive understanding of, well, I'm not just going to show you my view because then that kind of makes my, like for my brother, for at least he'll say, well, I don't agree with that. And I'm like, all right, well, then we have to go through your other options. Like, you have to believe something here. Uh, you, yeah. you know, let me explain to you some of these other views. Uh, you know, so I think that's important because it's easy for people to just reject, you know, let's say full preterism. And then you're like, okay, but then where do you land? And they're like, well, I don't really have a place. And it's like, well, let me inform you. You have to land somewhere. So let me give you a couple options. Uh, you right. know, so that's, uh, that'll be a very useful tool. Uh, in those conversations, and I, I, I look forward to it. So I, I'll pray you forward, and I, I hope that uh, it'll be a blessing to many. Uh, I know we have it over the time. If you don't mind, do, can I unmute some mics and just have some uh, yeah, questions? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Sure. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll do this for a little bit here, uh, allow folks to, uh, you know, ask some questions. And again, uh, please be mindful, everyone, that we're a little over the time. Uh, however, um, we'll get in on some thoughts here, and then I'll give you both opportunity to share some last, you know, uh, closing thoughts. I don't like the last thoughts comment there. Uh, and then, <laughs> you know, uh, Preter, and then we'll, I'll move toward a close of our, our session here this evening. So, uh, Edward, I see you're unmuted. Dallas, I see you're unmuted. Good evening. And Vicki, I want to welcome you to be unmuted and join us uh, if you feel as well. Please jump in and share your thoughts. Okay, I just wanted to share Revelation 12, uh, verse 11. They triumph over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. I just wanted to read that part. Um, your testimony was very um, uh, helpful and enlightening, you know, because I'm suffering pain and stuff like that from my job. And, you know, from some of the medications that they had given me, some of the um, side effects and stuff like that, you know, sitting down can be painful, you know, walking and the various things can be painful and things of this nature. So, you know, your testimony, you know, and how you're persevering, you know, through, through the struggle, you, you know, you're persevering, you're, 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 you're preaching the gospel, you know, you're getting the word out on, you know, on covenant eschatology or fulfilled eschatology. And uh, it's very important that you're demonstrating, you know, uh, being identified with Christ in your walk, how, you know, you suffer like our reigns on the just and the unjust and how you suffer like the unjust may suffer, but your responses as a Christian would, should respond. You know, that's basically what I wanted to share. Thank you, Thank Edward. You. That's so nice of you. Thank you so much. It means a lot. We'll be lifting you up in prayer as well for uh, what you're going through there too. I mean, I know it's got to be a struggle. Yes. Uh, be sitting and, and standing. She suffers yeah, from the same thing. So I know firsthand how tough that's got to be. Yeah. Yeah. 
So hang in there. Yeah, sure will. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are an inspiration as well. Inspiration. Thanks. Thank you. Absolutely. Dallas, I see you're uh, unmuted there. What's going on, brother? How you doing? I'm good. I just like to say how appreciative I am. Uh, there are people like you who are still super excited and, you know, just joyfully attacking the preterist angle. Uh, I personally have gone out of partial preterism. I, I didn't really live in futurism for very long, lived mostly in partial preterism. Didn't even know there was a thing called full preterism or fulfilled eschatology. So when I, like, it took me weeks like just a few weeks to say oh that's it i'm done with this once you've heard that <laughs> options there but yeah. what i have found was there's a hole you're, you're stepping into a rat's nest and it's you know i'm looking forward to writing uh, my first book towards preaching the message but towards genesis because i don't dare step into the waters that you are so i'm so <laughs> thankful and glad that there are people out there because there needs to be a voice it's, yeah. it's not going to be mine, but it needs to be <laughs> someone. So thank you so much for doing it and having so much of that right spirit behind it. And it, it's blessed me to hear your story and to know that that's why you're doing it is just get it out there. So that's fantastic. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate really appreciate it. that. Yeah, it is a passion of ours and we are trying to get it out for whoever will listen. And, um, and it yeah. is, it, they are tough waters, as you said, uh, <laughs> You know, some people won't have a Bible study with us anymore. Um, some people won't give me the time of day anymore. Talk to us. I just want to say our passion ultimately isn't necessarily for, for predator. It, it's, it's for preterism because we believe that's the truth. The passion yes. is for the truth. Yes. All we have been doing our entire Christian walk is trying to understand our Bibles and get to the yeah. truth because it, it's, it is messy and there's a lot of different views out there. And how do you know which one's right unless you study yeah. them all? I mean, and we've done that. <laughs> yeah, as a Christian, you're trying to base your life on the Bible and scripture, but, you know, a lot of things weren't lining up. We want to get it right. We want to base our life on the truth of scripture and make sure that we're getting it right, because we are basing our life on that. Right. And it's it, important it to get it right. It's our foundation as Christians, since and, every Christian, I wish, was as passionate yeah. about it. And those time statements are part of getting it right and, you know, seeing what Christ did already for us, because I think it was uh, R.B. Yerby called it the Great Train Robbery, where Everyone's just waiting for things they already have. <laughs> and they're just being robbed because they're told to okay. wait for it, but they already have it in Christ, yeah. you know? And, you know, it's just that truth needs to get out there and people need to get a hold of that. And I think, you know, it'll just help uh, not only Christianity as a whole, I mean, preterism, but Christianity as a whole, I think it'll help just to get people out there more active in the society and stuff, just to stand on God's truth and word instead of like sitting around waiting for a rapture or something and not doing anything. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> and the pastor used uh, holy listening, holy listening, where you listen intently, you know, to see where you agree and even if, where you disagree, you know, but you want to listen to to understand the the, the concept that's being uh, conveyed, you know, and 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 to encourage to give you a word of encouragement, don't be ashamed of the gospel. That's right. you know, share you know your the word and don't you know compromise <laughs> yeah yeah and that's great uh, edward too uh we wow what you said was amazing because like just in in general <laughs> if someone brings up another topic other than like futurism sometimes we get just dismissed and just called crazy or no one like spends the time to actually listen and understand why someone believes what they believe or what journey they took in their life to get to the viewpoint that they they've come to so far and, you know, people just dismiss, get dismissed all the time. And what you said is awesome because like, you know, we should be listening. We should be listening to what other people have to say, their view and how they got there. And, you know, and, yeah. and other points of view, that's how we grow. You, exactly. If you're not willing to hear other people out, how do you ever plan on growing or learning? You know, there's so many people out there with an unteachable spirit. You, you, so you've already figured everything out. You're done growing. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was uh, Brother Ward Henley the other day, uh, we were talking with Ward and we talked about the difference between being uh, know-it-alls versus listen-to-alls. And yes, uh, yeah. you will be a listen-to-all. That doesn't mean I agree with everything I hear, right. uh, but I will listen to everything. And at least, you know, unfortunately, and we, you might notice this as well, a lot of times in the eschatology conversations, when we're talking with our friends, you know, and I'll say this, I'll speak for myself. There's been times where I haven't listened enough to understand their vantage point. 
yeah. where they're at so that, you know, I, I can explain appropriately the right view and vice versa. There's times where people obviously don't give me the proper space to say what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're, you're cutting me off. You're, you're, you're uh, you know, machine gunning me with questions. Yes. You know, like, that happens all the time to us. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I believe it. I believe it. So, you know, and again, that's why I can understand why you, uh, you know, getting to the heart of why you would write this book, I can understand. Mm-hmm. Because I, I know those conversations. I know the, uh, you know, the, trials and tribulations of, uh, you you know, studying, or what I would like to say is just called, I call it seeking, searching, studying, improving, being Mm -hmm. a person that walks in that spirit, you're going to find yourself, you know, in, in, you know, some conversations where you need to be doing holy listening. And unfortunately, what we notice around us is people aren't doing that back to us, but we still, you know, let's not forget the, the, the true ethic that we are called to walk in is we're not to do what the people are doing to us. We're called to do what we know is right. And we know right. it's right. and hear what people are saying so that we can properly respond to those points. Yeah. So I actually want to say you reminded me of that because that's something I sometimes we have to remind ourselves of because we've experienced that where I was like, because you know, we get excited to share. We, we, we're learning so much. We study so much and we want to share. And sometimes we, we, we box everybody into a box and we assume all dispensationalists believe the same thing or they know the same things. And we need to gauge where they're at. Tell me what you believe and why you believe it. And, and then we can respond appropriately instead of just trying to cram something down their throat when we, we're assuming we already know what they know or what they believe. And we, we all need to be better listeners, definitely. Yeah. On a such Saturday morning Bible study, we're studying uh, through the uh, um, uh, church history. And there was a gentleman in one of the church history studies that was saying that what when when you speak to an individual, you want to talk to that individual as an individual. You don't want to use uh, an ethic that you use for another person for this person. Like a, 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 a one one way fixes one way fixes it all. You know, you want to speak to that person where they are and where they're at. So, and that takes listening as well. Yes. <laughs> this is all good for marriage too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. The whole app, no doubt about it. By the way, thank you for that, Edward. I think that was Tatian. Uh, that may, may have been a quote from Tatian there where he said, speak plainly uh, to every man, you know, and speak in a manner that they would understand. Because again, there was a lot of confusion, as much confusion as there is today in the church was just as much there in the second century. Uh, so, uh, you know, thank you for mentioning that, Edward. Well, uh, unless anyone has uh, anything else to mention, I will afford uh, Pete and Rachel the opportunity to share any last thoughts or closing thoughts that they'd like to share with us uh, here. Um, yeah, um, I guess for for me, I know you would agree, but um, for us, and I know it's at the end in the end of our book, but um, I know a lot of people just look at eschatology and it's just a simple secondary issue. But for us, um, it is a primary issue because we feel, you know, we're sticking up for Christ, basically. Um, we don't feel it's a secondary issue. We're defending Christ and the authority of scripture because he said he was going to do something. And, you know, I know, again, Bible believing Christians don't think Christ is wrong or anything, but, you know, Christ did say he was going to return that first century. And if you're putting it 2000 years out, you know, whether you realize you're doing it or not, like, I feel like, you know, you're not really <laughs> um, giving or saying Christ did what he said he was going to do. And I just feel like we're just sticking up for the authority. Like we don't look at this as so much a secondary issue because it is affects the authority of scripture, the authority of Christ. And so um, to us, it's just very important. Now are we going to like shun somebody or divide over it? No, but like, we just feel that this is really powerful though. And it, it should be, you know, super important to everybody because if Christ said something, you know, obviously if he didn't do it, then why are we following him? And what's the point of anything? So uh, we're just stand up for Christ and what he did and his word and his truth. And um, yeah, do yeah. you want anything to add to that? Um, just, well, not only that too, what I've always said, the more I've studied eschatology, the more I learn how much it affects your understanding of the whole Bible. So much is interwoven into that. Mm-hmm. It's from A to Z. So it's not just a, a minor topic. It's a major topic in, in scripture and, and it affects your overall understanding of, of scripture so it, as a christian like i just feel like eschatology should be important i just think it's 
it's confusing because there's so many different views and I do think so some people are intimidated by it and um that's why we're trying to write this new book we're writing we're trying to help make it easier for people and one last point just worldview it just uh we just want people to you know understand what they have in Christ now get out there do something don't sit around waiting for a rapture and you know just sitting by the sidelines let's just get out there get involved reclaim this uh culture and just uh, get busy, you know, and be involved and just get out there and do it. So. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your example, your witness, your wisdom, your shared wisdom here. And of course your time uh, and your fellowship here with us uh, today. I, I, I'm immensely uh, grateful uh, for, you know, this time together. And of course the privilege to be able to look through this book and uh, you know, hopefully share it with some folks. I'm going to take you up on that challenge, Pete. By the way, I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you know now. I'm going to go okay. out in public and I'm going to tell someone, just read with me 13 pages. Just write. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'll videotape it yeah. if you like. That'd be uh, awesome. I'm going to go in public and then I want to see what sort of responses uh, I can get from folks because 13 pages of this book is that, that maybe take maybe what 10, 15 minutes at it maybe it's 10 an minutes. Easy read. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, you, you know, and maybe that's a bit rushed, but either way, it won't take long, uh, you know, sit down and, um, you, you know, I want to take you on that challenge. I thought that was a cool challenge there. <laughs> that might be a good sales pitch. Uh, you know, just read the 13 pages. That's it. You got it. Yeah. Uh, we present a compelling argument in those 13. So, yeah. but, uh, but thank you so much for having us on. Oh my God, we love you. We love you guys. And uh, we just appreciate all that you're doing yeah. for preterism as well and getting out there and all these podcasts and everything. And um, we appreciate you and Blue Point Church and everything, and just thank you for all you're doing. Yes, amen. Well, thank you, brother. All glory to God. And uh, again, thank you for your witness. Uh, and I will be in touch, of course. Uh, I look forward to communicating with you a bit about the book, uh, working on some bulk orders, and uh, uh, seeing what we might be able to develop in the future. Thank you again for your testimony, your witness. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to move us toward a close here for the rest of our program. Uh, by the way, tomorrow we're going to have the Preterist Power Hour at 10 a.m. I had to make a subtle change, 10.30 uh, won't work for my schedule, so hopefully you'll mark that down. Be here with us tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, we're going to go live. We're going to talk a little bit with Dallas. Dallas is actually was just talking with all of you, uh, better understanding the Bible on YouTube. Uh, we had some conversation last week. Uh, Dallas wanted to share with us about the third uh, day, uh, the third day man, and I look forward to kind of learning a little bit about where his thoughts were. Uh, I do want to encourage you visit Better Understanding the Bible. I'm still working my way uh, backward from the, uh, the the discussion that he had offered about the Son of God, the sons of God in uh, Genesis 6, and working my way to uh, catch up with the hell video. And we'll be talking a bit about that tomorrow morning. So just wanted to uh, pique your interest uh, in those things. Uh, I will be working on a blog uh, for this session here. Uh, you'll have the Burroughs of Berea podcast, some of the resources I mentioned at the beginning, a link to uh, go ahead and purchase the book on Amazon, uh, if you so choose. Uh, that's right, the Burroughs of Berea podcast, you know, we got to give them a shout out at all times. Uh, and then a, a link to purchase the book, as well as Pete's email, so you can go ahead and communicate with him. Uh, that will be all uh, mentioned in our update. I'm going to be doing a book review on this as well. So that could, that'll be on my personal blog. See, my screen's blurred. I don't have the, the beautiful copy that Pete had held up there. Um, but you'll be blessed by uh, uh, getting a copy for yourself and going through that. Um, Fulfilled Magazine, something I have to mention. Fulfilled Magazine uh, just published their uh, latest one. Hopefully you got your hands on the spring 2023. Fulfilled Magazine, this volume 18, issue one. The Dominion Mandate for the Preterists. I'll talk a little bit about that tomorrow morning uh, on our program as well. And last but not least, I just want to go ahead and remind you all that we're working toward our eighth annual Bible conference here at the Blue Point Bible Church, the Kingdom and Worldview Conference. That's October 6th through the 8th. That will be here uh, at the Blue Point Bible Church. We're going to have more information on our website. Uh, guest speakers include, but are not limited to, Glenn Hill, Ward Fenley, Daniel Rogers, and Tim Martin. The Burroughs of Berea podcast will be on scene uh, for our conference this year. Uh, many of you know I'm working on a book called Kingdom Kings. That's not the book I was alluding to before about full preterism. We're on two books at once. Pray for me, folks. Uh, you know, pray for me in many ways. I need it. Uh, th that being said, um, I'll be working on uh, full preterism, proclaiming the presence and purpose of God. And that should be published, self-published in the next couple of weeks, if not maybe a month or two. Uh, and then Kingdom Kings will be released at our conference in October. And that is a 
contextual and applicational commentary on the books of Kings. And then of course, we're gonna have many other contributors. Uh, I know Edward Howell, who's here with us, will be one of our contributors for our exhortations and others that will be speaking at the conference. So uh, look forward to it, plan to be there. Uh, we hope to stream online. So if you're not able to join us live here in person, you'll be able to join us online. Maybe we can uh, figure out a way to create the cool chat room like the Berean Bible Church uh, uh, usually does. And got to give them a shout out because of course I know the boroughs of Berea had done the interviews there. Uh, Pastor Dave Curtis is always very gracious with his efforts. They have their conference coming up this April. You want to make sure, go to uh, bereanbiblechurch.org and uh, go ahead and uh, look up their spring conference. You'll be blessed. There's so much beautiful stuff happening uh, in the preterist community. I mean, let's rejoice in what God is doing in this very moment. He's always doing far more than we know uh, that or we think. So uh, let's just praise him this evening for that. Let's pray, uh, put some prayer to Pete and Rachel's lives, put some prayer to their resources that they have already provided, and of course, the resources that they're working on. And let's just continue to uh, rejoice and pray for the, the harvest that God is continuing to reveal. Let's uh, close out in a word of prayer this evening, and I thank you all for being here for our session tonight. Mighty God, we rejoice in your truth. We thank you for the testimony that you've put here uh, in front of us, that we can rejoice with Pete and Rachel, Lord, in regards to what you've done in their lives by saving them, Lord, by calling them yours. Uh, Lord, we can rejoice in your bringing them together and giving them the minds and hearts uh, that you have done uh, in regards to your truth, in regards to these deeper things, Lord. Uh, the, the you know importance of theology is you. You are our theology. You are our understanding, Lord. And uh, we're just sitting here and, and doing our best, seeking, searching, studying, and proving. And Pete and Rachel are a great example of that, Lord. And uh, we thank you for their, their testimony. We thank you for their resources. Uh, we pray that you continue to bless their marriage, continue to bless their efforts, and bring healing, Lord, uh, where only you can bring healing, Lord. You know the deepest desires. You know our needs, Lord. And we, we rejoice in that. We rejoice in your sovereignty and in your providence in our lives and in this world. And we ask that uh, in our fellowship together, Lord, you would continue to encourage us and continue to remind us of all that we have in you. Thank you, Lord. You truly are the author and finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless and go in peace.